you know, here we are in America responding to a circumstance that we face. A circumstance which is you know, the turning of the wheel of human understanding and human imagination. We are coming out of a period where we've been dominated by myth and story. And, you know, and having developed incredible measuring devices and incredible tools for processing the measurements that we make, we have come to see the world, you know, both from a scientific and also from a historical perspective in completely new ways. You know, a lot of us understand, those of us who, who have been educated, and many people who, you know, are not that educated but, you know, have some fundamental feeling in their heart about, you know, their own circumstance, have come to understand that the story that we've been told about the origins of our communities are really not true whether it is the origin story for the United States or the origin story of the religious tradition that we've been engaged in, our, our parents were engaged in, we come to understand that those stories are false stories. And the disorientation has been profound and our response has been to try to discover ourselves in a new way and invent, and I shouldn't say invent, I should and evolve a new story. You know, for me, this story, the story really became clearly a fake story. The story of America became a fake story. Uh, during the Civil Rights Movement in the Vietnam War. It's a fake story because you see, you know, that the fundamental principle articulated in the Declaration of Independence that all people are created equal. Well, all men anyway. <laughs> you know, was not a principal value that the United States was act actually operating in. Mm -hmm. Then, going further, in that same period of the civil rights movement and the Vietnam War, we looked at our religious institutions that we were attached to through our families and observed the ways in which they responded to civil rights movement in the Vietnam War, which, you know, deeply exposed the hypocrisy of those programs. And I think the, the disorientation of it all, you know, coincided with the sort of, you know, the emergence of world travel and, you know, new technologies which facilitated connecting with people and suddenly there are Indians on our doorstep you know, who want to teach us yoga. And um, I experienced yoga, and not immediately, but in time, but over the course of a year and a half or two, fell in love with it, just as you did, just as everybody here has, and practiced intensely to the degree that it exposed in me something that I had kind of forgotten, which was a spirituality that I, I first discovered as a really young person in the church. And a, a spirituality that was based on love loving God, 
and loving Jesus, but, you know, fundamentally, the thing that I could do was love. And so I came back to that experience, that spirituality based on love, and engaged it as deeply as I possibly could in my practice of yoga, and came to the realization at that point that everything is love. And pretty soon, I'm loving God. God is loving me back. You know, the whole notion of a me and a God of any separation dissolves in the experience of love. And here we are, because of that. So, you know, and we have, over the last 47 years, is that long, 45 years, 71, 46 years, Added on 47 years, we have developed a community of practitioners who, you know, have deeply shared their lives together and expressed real commitments to this process of cultivating love. So, but the challenge has been, and the challenge is in this culture. You know, first of all, how do you deal with your own personal finances? Well, the way that we have addressed that primarily, as we say, each of us has to assume financial responsibility for ourselves. You know, I've encouraged as much education as humanly possible among the people who participate in our community. Because I think education is a way we, that we can invest in ourselves and our own lives and grow our own self-sufficiency, you know, at the same time as we're also, you know, building our own freedom, if need be. I encourage education because my assumption is generally that anybody who comes here is going to leave here. And that's mostly been true. Hasn't been exclusively true, but mostly true. And so it's my idea that people who come here, when they leave, should leave better off than they got here, if humanly possible. So we've encouraged people to get as much education as they can, and then to go on from there to establish themselves in careers that really represent serving other human beings. Because with an attitude of service, we probably won't get wealthy, but we will become, you know, financially stable and we will have a career, a life that is satisfying. And a life that is based on giving and flowing, rather than a life that's based on taking and, you know, engulf and devour, which is the, you know, essential corporate imperial model that operates in the United States and increasingly in the world. So, you know, for us as yogis, we want to be self-sufficient. We want to be responsible for our own lives. We want to cultivate the quality of our own life and we want to understand what cultivating the quality of our own life means through engaging in spiritual practice which has two tiers to it. One is yoga, you know, the other is meditation, kundalini yoga meditation. And so, you know, then though, and the spiritual development part of our life, as well as the service part of our, of our physical existence, are all based on the understanding of contact, alignment, and flow which is my words, three words that define yoga. Yoga is contact, alignment, and flow. Living in this world, and you know, especially in America today, where income inequality is about to reach heights that, I mean, it's already at a level that astonishes me. I mean, literally astonishes me. And it's about to go places that even the greediest son of a bitch in the history of the universe 
never imagined would be possible. That's really going to change our culture incredibly. It's going to make it a lot di more difficult for people than it's already not easy to get educated. You know, when I went to college, you know that it cost me $110 a month for room and board, and it cost me $110 a semester for tuition. You know, now if you go to Indiana University where I attended, <coughs> Probably, probably costs you twelve thousand dollars a year, and if you're a student, you know you come out of school basically in, with a minimum of fifty thousand dollars of debt, no matter what. It's it's mind-boggling, but having said that, I think the formula still works. We have to find a way to be of service. You know, and we have to be willing to totally take responsibility for ourselves and totally commit to growing ourselves in the two dimensions of our existence, or three, you know, our physical life, our mental, emotional life, and our spiritual life. And that's what makes us a yogi. But it's no longer possible because of the, the greedy, ungenerous nature of our society today. It is not possible for us to depend on the donations of other people. You know, I never did that anyway. But historically, Buddhism and Hindu uh, yogis have always depended on the donations of well-wishers. You know, even if you go to India today, in almost every temple in India, of which there must be a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand, almost every temple has some kind of feeding program going on every day for yogis and and spiritual people and and the poor. <clears throat> every day. Here, you know, nothing. I mean, here. People are getting arrested for trying to feed the poor. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. So, you know, that's not a model that's going to work. Depending on others is not a model that's going to work for us. We have to depend on ourselves, and that's a good thing. Depending on ourselves, we will, you know, become very much stronger. And moving forward, you know, in our lives, we will become, you know, established deeply, you know, in our own creative energy, in our own creative capacity, and hopefully following through on our commitments, come to a place where we understand, you know, exactly who we are and what this life is about. <coughs>